Over the last several years, Josh Scott and his team at JHS Pedals in Kansas City have been working diligently behind the scenes to resurrect a long lost technology. Now, I first learned about this last year when I was doing Pedals the Musical at JHS's headquarters and Josh brought this up. And at first I didn't believe him. I thought he was completely full of it. This long lost technology that he found in Italy while researching another project. And I have to say, I really doubted him. I haven't seen anything like this before or heard anything like this before and I didn't think they could do it. But lo and behold, just over one year later, we have it, the JHS Voice Tech. And this has been one of the most moving pieces of guitar gear I've ever owned and ever used. I was conducting interviews and research on the history of Gen Electronica and Vox factories that are located in Pescara, Italy. And I stumbled onto something that I knew would forever change guitar. The more I found out about this discovery, the more I knew it was of massive historical significance. I immediately knew that it was going to change guitar, but its implications went far beyond anything I could imagine at the time. As one thread of research led to another, I was led back to Newark, New Jersey in 1887 and to Thomas Edison, the man of a thousand patents. Edison developed groundbreaking devices like the Kinetograph, one of the very first motion picture cameras, the incandescent light bulb, the rechargeable battery, and the spirit phone, which allegedly made it possible to communicate with the dead. His go-to strategy was usually to improve upon an existing apparatus. But in the case of the phonograph, he charted an entirely new course in developing the first device to record and reproduce sounds. His original prototype consisted of a sheet of tin foil wrapped around a cylindrical drum, which then turned by a handle, both rotated and moved laterally. He was able, for the first time in human history, to artificially capture the human voice and reproduce it with what we now know as a recording. Although inventors like Alexander Graham Bell, Chichester Bell, and Charles Tainter perfected the technology in years to come, in 1877, Edison was the man who first patented the idea, and he made it into a reality. He moved on to other innovations in the following years, but returned to the phonograph in the decade before his death in 1931, a fact unknown until now. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, a design engineer for Gen Electronica and Vox named Samuel Bracken rediscovered Edison's final work and attempted to build upon it, but he was unsuccessful. There are even certain government records that show that Bracken's research was acquired by the CIA in 1976 for its potential to replicate and simulate human voice. The idea was that prominent political and social figures' voices could be perfectly replicated to learn state secrets. These studies were quickly abandoned when President Gerald Ford killed all funding towards any further Cold War defense. 
In the early 1980s, as MXR fell into bankruptcy and MXR founder, genius inventor, Keith Barr developed further and further into the ever expanding digital hardware and tech of the era, Bracken reached out to Keith for help and the final work of Edison was finally realized. Due to various personal situations, pending legal issues, and the eventual fall of MXR, Keith never disclosed this work. It sat in the abandoned offices of Gen Electronica and Vox for over 45 years until I discovered it. With some light lifting on my part, including transferring all of Keith's coding and DSP work into a more modern and relevant digital platform, I believe what you're about to see is the single greatest invention in the history of musical technology. 145 years after Edison's very first attempts at capturing the human voice, Samuel Bracken, Keith Barr, and myself have taken what was a simple dream of capturing that voice, and we have transformed it into a new form of human expression. Now that you know the story, let us introduce you to the greatest device I've ever had the honor of working on, Meet Voice Tech, the world's first ever analog augmented voice synthesis technology. I'm really excited to be teaming up with Rhett Scholl to give you the first ever demonstration of this product. So this is it, the JHS voice tech. Now the controls on this pedal are pretty unique. Because it's meant to emulate the human voice, there's things like vibrato and formant and drive. And it might be a little confusing at first, but I'm gonna dumb it down for us guitar players here. Uh, first, we have the style selector. So up here on the top selection, we've got a male vocal mode. In the middle, we've got the female vocal mode. Now, both of those are monophonic, meaning they only play one note at a time. You can't track chords. But if you're trying to do a single harmony or a melody line, that's what those modes are for. Then on the bottom selection here, we have the harmony mode. Harmony mode is pretty interesting. It's a polyphonic mode and it tracks your chords. You can play whole chord progressions and chord movements, and this will turn your chords into vocals. It's absolutely mind blowing. The first time I tried harmony mode, it like changed my life. So quickly, I'll take you through the different modes. We'll start on the male uh, monophonic mode. Turn it off, here's my clean tone. And here it is with the pedal. Here's female mode. And here is harmony mode. Now, because harmony mode is polyphonic only, I need to play a chord. So I'm just gonna play a B major triad. That's pretty insane. Now, although this is a guitar pedal intended for guitar players, uh, JHS did something really interesting here, which was include an XLR output. So there's two different outputs on this pedal. The normal quarter inch out is designed to go just straight to your guitar amplifier like you would with any other pedal. But the XLR out acts like a DI, so you don't actually have to have another DI box to convert your quarter inch to XLR to go into a recording interface. They've included a DI in this pedal, which is really, really cool. There's also two output modes here, which is really interesting. Uh, there's a small switch here on the side, on the output side, that will do one of two things. Uh, when it's in the down position, both outputs are sending the wet effect, the vocal effect. When it's in the up position, it's now split these two outputs, so your guitar goes through the quarter inch unaffected, so you can have a normal guitar sound independent of the voice tech, and then the 100% wet vocal effect goes through the XLR out into your interface. Really useful feature, because this is designed to live on your pedal board. You wanna be able to maintain your guitar sound, but also have a vocal sound. So this would be really useful if you're on a gig uh, and you wanted to layer a, a melody or a harmony on top of your guitar, you can have that with the dual outputs here. Next up is the formant control. Now formant you can think of like a tone control, 
vocalists have a wide range of control over not just their pitch and their vibrato, but also sort of the timbre or the tone of the note. For example, like ooh and ah and e, that's what the form and control is giving you. When it's all the way to the left, you can think of it like your tone control being rolled off a little bit. So it's it's more of an ooh sound. It's kind of back of the throat, ooh. And then as you turn it up, it goes wah, almost like a wah-wah. In fact, it might have been cool for JHS to include an expression control for that so you could get kind of a natural vocal wah-wah kind of sound. Seems like a pretty blatant oversight. Anyways, as you turn the, uh, the formant control up, you go from ah down to E all the way up at the the top there so it's kind of like you know moving from the back of your throat all the way forward so ooh, ah, to E and this is an incredibly useful control but this is what it sounds like so once again here's my clean tone and here's the formant control uh, female mode everything else at noon we start all the way to the left so the ooh sound and we're gonna roll it all the way up all right, next up we've got the vibrato control. So we're on uh, the male mode here, the male vocalist mode. So the vibrato control is actually pretty interesting. It controls the amount of vocal vibrato that you get. Now as guitar players, we're all familiar with vibrato, right? We all know how to go. <laughs> When we have the vibrato control all the way to the left, we have essentially no vibrato whatsoever. And this is actually pretty useful if you're going to be doing things like stacking harmonies. Any uh, producers out there that track vocals, you know that a lot of times when you're stacking harmonies, you're stacking vocals, you don't want a lot of vocal vibrato because you can get some weird kind of phasing and, and weird effects if uh, vibratos are happening at different intervals. So the vibrato all the way off is pretty nice because it's just a straight tone. So that's no vibrato. Now, as I turn the vibrato up, you're gonna notice that the vibrato gets a little bit deeper. It gets more present, so. It's pretty nice, kind of middle of the road territory. Uh, but it quickly gets pretty ridiculous the more you turn the vibrato up. If I've got it at like 2 o'clock there on the knob, 2.30, uh, it's actually not that usable. I mean, I guess if you wanted to like pair it up with some other pedal and mimic a weird synthesizer patch or something, you could do that. But otherwise, I mean, if, and if we max it out, it just it sounds utterly ridiculous. Ooh. Again, I think that's just kind of dumb. But in the middle, it's pretty usable. Uh, the, the other thing that I don't like about the vibrato control is it doesn't track your actual guitar vibrato. Uh, and again, as, as experienced guitar players, uh, we know how much and when to bring in the vibrato on a note. Um, it's part of the feel, it's part of playing with feeling. And this just kind of does it for you. It's like an easy button. It, it doesn't give you any control and I wish uh, the Josh and the team there would have you know thought about that. But anyways. Now next up we have drive and this is by far my favorite control on the voice tech. Now uh, initially when I got the pedal, I thought that that was like vocal grit. Like you know how some singers can really dig in and get some grit out of their voice, but that's not actually what's going on here. Uh, drive is actually a separate preamp circuit that JHS put in this pedal that's modeled after Josh's favorite tube style mic preamp. When the drive knob is all the way down, it's super clean, really transparent. It's adding just a touch of harmonic saturation like you'd get from a tube mic pre. But as we bring it up, the preamp is gonna distort more and more. And you might think, why would I want that? Why would I want distorted vocals? And for that, I would reference like any of the Aretha Franklin records. If you listen to like Chain of Fools or RESPCT, any of those old Aretha Franklin records, you can hear her completely overdriving the preamp of the recording console she was singing into. And it adds this really killer vibe to the track. And so uh, there's countless other examples of famous vocal takes that are pushing the preamp too hard. And this pedal emulates that really, really well. Oh. It's super cool. I have a, a few tube-based preamps here in the studio and this breaks up exactly like 
uh, my tube preamps do. They did an incredible job of modeling that in the pedal. So I've got to hand it to Josh and the team at JHS. They absolutely outdid themselves with the voice tech. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've never played anything like this. And the possibilities are endless. I mean, stacking this with other effects, uh, putting it on your pedal board, I mean, this is gonna open up a lot of opportunities for players like me who aren't great vocalists. Now it's not perfect, there's a few drawbacks like the vibrato control I think is not very well implemented. I wish they would have given that a little more thought. And they went far enough to include the built-in preamp. I think it would have been cool if they would have included a couple more of their effects. Maybe made it a slightly bigger box and added a delay and a reverb or a compressor. I mean, there's potential here to essentially build a full-on vocal signal chain in a pedal. I mean, you could add a compressor and delay and reverb and several different effects and basically have a full-on production, a vocal production studio in a box. So maybe they'll do that in the future. I don't know. I think this is just a proof of concept, a proof of technology for them to show that they could do it. And um, so once again, huge thanks to Josh and JHS for uh, sending me the pedal. This video was not sponsored by JHS. Uh, they didn't pay for this video other than giving me the pedal to keep for free. Uh, all these thoughts are my own. They didn't see the video before it went live. Uh, they had no input on it as well. If you wanna find out more about this pedal, I'll have uh, their website linked down below where you can find out more about the release date and how to order one. Uh, also their YouTube channel linked down below. You should check that out if you haven't done so already. Uh, while you're down there, leave a like and a comment. And uh, also I've got a brand new video course on the way very, very soon, actually next week. The Fretboard Fundamental Chords and Rhythm course uh, is dropping the first week in April. So if you're interested in picking that up, check the link in the description box down below. My name is Rhett Shull. Thank you so much for watching and remember there is no plan B.